the Sony Barano is the perfect size camera with portability slash usability. Blibbly. Listen, the Sony Barano, listen, listen. The Sony Barano is the perfect size camera. The Sony Barano is the perfect size camera with portability and usability that you can't afford. You can't afford it. Trust me. The best is yet to come, though. The best is yet to come. We haven't made the best camera yet, but the Sony Barano is getting very, very close. I don't really even care about the IBIS. I didn't even use it. Yo, it's the perfect size. It's the perfect size. It's the perfect cube. I, I'm just picturing it in my hand right now. I would never let it go. I would, I would never let it go. <laughs> yeah. There you can kind of see a comparison of the FX6 versus the Barano. Yeah. All right, so we're here at the Verano event, and um, I gotta say, I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed. Um, but we're gonna talk about the things I'm not impressed about in a couple minutes. I got my hands on with it. I was able to uh, basically hold it in my hands, figure out my shooting styles, and I'll tell you what. Other than the frame rates, it's a viable camera. Other than the frame rates, it's a viable camera. I'm here with Paul Healy. He in the background somewhere. He over there. And I'm here with uh, Thomas Cubby. I think Thomas Cubby over there somewhere too. And um, there's not much I can really hate on this camera about, but the frame rates is a really big deal. If you're coming from an FX9 camera, you realize that you didn't get 4K 120. Well, in this camera, you're only going to get 4K 120 if you crop to 17 by 9 um, Super 35. And that's in XOCN, that's also in XAVC, which um, both are DCI 4K. So it's, it's kind of disappointing. Um, it's kind of disappointing. And also, you only get 4K and Super 35. That's really a piss for me. Um, sure you get it. I definitely want to see the difference in um, dynamic range because every time I switch on my FX6, I lose an increased amount of light. Um, and that's in full frame. So um, being that I'm already having to crop down from 8K to 4K, in Super 35, I'm really concerned about the fall off and uh, exposure that I'm going to lose. So that's something to take a look at. Listen, the next cinema camera as well, this is probably the most biggest feature that will wow a lot of people, make them do research and understand that it's more bigger than IBIS. Um, there's a viewfinder out there that Sony made with an F55 called the EL200. And it's an OLED viewfinder and it's the right size the right everything like they say history repeats itself so it's about time that history brought the viewfinder back to the camera to the operator the next cinema camera needs to be compatible with the el 200 absolutely so we can get jiggy you know what i'm saying Look, this is a really huge deal with all cameras. This addresses everybody out there that wants the Barano. So watch this video right now. Like the video, do all that cool stuff. You know what I'm saying? Maybe look good. Y'all know I look good. Look, we need to fix the playback. We be spending all this money on these cameras and on the lenses to look at images through these cameras and lenses. And when we look at playback, it's like a VCR from 1992. 
It take us forever to get back to the slow motion cut to show the client the ooh la la to give him the googly eyes. You know what I'm saying? The Doug eyes. You know what I'm saying? Pork chop from Doug. You know, remember his eyes? It was big, wasn't he? I'm old school. <sighs> we need to fix the playback, man. We need to fix it to where we can scrub a little bit better, use a touch screen, something. I don't know. No, you good, brother. Come on in. All right. We are here today at the Sony event looking at the oh, Sony Pirano. What's going on with my hair? What's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you, enough to wear it. why don't you tell the people who you are and what you do? I'm Stephen McCarthy. I'm a director of photography, documentary cinematographer. Uh, and uh, uh, the Pirano is uh, kind of a new turn for me. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing where that might fit into my documentary uh, clientele. As uh, probably, uh, I think there is a there's a gap there that needs to be filled. So I'm looking forward to uh, putting this through some of its some of its uh, some of its rigorous uses. The sensor is not the sensor of the Venice 2, but man, it performs about the same. We're going to have very similar sensitivity, very similar noise ratios. We're going to basically be able to treat it as a B cam, D cam, whatever we want with the Venice 2. That's a great thing because when we came out with the FX9, that was based on a previous sensor and did not follow that of the Venice 1. Uh, it didn't have the same native ISOs, uh, but really great camera. Then we went into record formats. And with the Venice 2, we introduced raw recording in the camera. And we're gonna talk more about raw and, it's, and why it plays into um, all types of production. That may not be your perception of raw right away, but it plays into all types of production. And in the Venice 2, we had several flavors of raw. In the Burano, we took one particular one that we think is the most universal for types of productions. And of course, in the FX9, we required third-party integration of a separate panel or recorder. And while that may be beneficial budgetarily and everything else, uh, it does add complexity or risk to an external device. So with the Burano being internal, we have some benefits. One of the other things that kind of switches over majorly is our variable ND. We'll spend some time on that, so I'll just touch on that real quick. And a number of features that came from all the way from the alpha world, right? So the alpha world is advancing with autofocus way beyond we did than what we did in cinema, to the point that Venice doesn't even have autofocus modes. But the Verano is inheriting our very latest autofocus functionality. A good Aton. The Aton cat on the shoulder. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then the image stabilization. That's a cool idea. It only does uh, three axes when it uses your lenses, right? Anybody's lens other than a Sony. Because they have because like the roll because of the it understands. So it understands which Sony lens is on there, so it can apply a correction for the other two axes. I see. It's not, it's not Sony lens. Still got it. Totally mechanical. We did change from the FX9 being that multi-port interface for the grip. Mm -hmm. We now have a grip that's back to being a 3.5 jack that was used in some of our previous uh, FX series cameras. Um, but you know, it's not as, it's not universal where you say, oh, I'll take an FS7, I'll take a FS5. Well, not every camera had that, but we do give a dedicated grip for that one, as well as the. Um, uh, Lank connector. In this case, I said it backwards. I'm sorry. The Lank is actually the uh, the new grips connector, uh, or the old grip connector would work in the remote port. Here's the area I wanted to call attention to, and I'm blocking it a little bit. Since we're this is the first camera at this level that doesn't require a third-party battery plate or some sort of solution just to use a brick pad. Ooh. How many people have basically put some sort of 15 mil rail slide in order to put a V-lock battery, four pin in, step down converters to go from 19.5 to 14 volt. Here I could stab a regular AC adapter using four pin, 12 volt, 14 volt, and then also be 12 volt on the 12, 14 volt um, on the shoe. So that's a big difference that we're not used to at this level of product. 
power drawer. We have been operating with 90s, 98s for all the way through to lunch, recording raw. We could make it on a 98 battery through half the production day because this camera's only 50 watts. All our, all our cinema cameras at this level, our brand and other brands, are typically about 100 watts, 150 watts for some of the heavier other manufacturers. The fact that we're 50 watts and you could have that independence as a solo operator and crewing, carrying less equipment into production is amazing. So 50 watts runs for a really long time. If you use a 150, man, you gotta get a long run. We have the camera here, but let's call out a couple things that uh, I bet even as you start to have hands on the camera, you may have not fully got to explore. The viewfinder on this is very similar to anybody that's worked at our uh, FX9 viewfinder. Um, it's still a 720 panel, but what we added was the functionality to have more control at the viewfinder itself. So what does that look like? It has six major buttons that we could go quickly into a menu setting. Now, this mimics what's on the Venice, right? This is, uh, and the Venice mimics what's on another manufacturer. And, you know, it's just, it's part of the cinematic culture to have the six, the big six buttons. So we did that. Um, but this is only one purpose for this panel. This is also our eyepiece viewfinder panel. So it could be, and I haven't replaced the image with uh, what would be a video image, but it could be a video monitor as a three and a half inch panel. It could be a loop. Uh, it's an improved loop over the FS7, so you could actually use it in that configuration, or you could be operating it as this screen that you see here. In this configuration, you're gonna notice that I'm actually on the assistant side of the panel. I'm actually where the viewfinder port is in number seven, so that's the assistant side, dump side, left coast, west coast, right coast. Um, Damn, I wasn't rolling that whole time, that's crazy. Wow, hold on, I'll be right back. Now, Here's a gripe. In the display, the user interface, the, the display, the info. Let me get back to my halo. Hold up, man. man I'm going to be trying to do all this. It's just natural. I'm, you boy, you tell my artist, like, show me. I don't believe you. I'm not impressed. Look, hold on. My iPad clicked off. In the display, they didn't put the level on the right side like how I'm is right now on the right side why would they do that that means that one i gotta like i have to stress my eyes to see if the camera's level two it's not in a position where it's natural to the eye to like feel it out to make adjustments and three what if i'm like left eyed no lisa what if I'm like left eye no Lisa? You know what I'm talking about? It, it's goofy. It needs to be at the bottom or it needs to be in the middle like the alphas. But we really need to rethink the the level and the peaking. I'll get to that later. But we need to think about the level system. Because look, the way the, the Canon level is, it's comfortable. It's nice. It's clean. It's 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 got that, that look. We ain't got that. And every time we try to use it, we clicking off other types of display that we losing so we don't get it at the same time like i believe when canon be peaking at the same time it's these arrows that tell you that it's level and that it's in focus at the same time with the little dashes and all the little navigation kit the gps shouty hold up yeah man we've been here talking about it all morning um well, this guy's taking the deep dive the full advantage of hands-on i told y'all i was gonna bring y'all content for seven continents and here is what we're here to do so um uh, we're here today with thomas covey uh, paul healy they work for sony uh, but we're here today as well to help y'all just understand this camera a little bit more get some hands-on with it and just figure out if it's for you or you know it's real world use and you know it's very very rare that it'll be in Boston because there's not a lot of camera houses here. So we want to give a huge shout out to uh, Talamass and um, big shout out to uh, Mike and uh, Mike and Eric who've been extending some hospitality towards us. Um, great place. It's a rainy morning, um, but we, we we in a place to be. So if y'all got questions, just leave them in the comments. But um, Stephen, 
give us your main takeaway from the camera and maybe your main gripe about the cameras so far. I haven't had a chance to um, I haven't had a chance to develop my gripes yet. Um, thankfully, <laughs> you've tipped me off to a few of them, but um, I think the. I've always found um, Sony has a lot of menu levels, and this seems to uh, this seems to have maybe done away with a few of the extraneous ones. Um, it's a good size camera ergonomically; it feels right uh, as a center of gravity, and um, and I think they did a really nice job configuring the cameras in both studio setup, handheld setup, and. Uh, Whatever other uh, situations I'm in, so it, it seems like a solid performer. I've been watching um, Sony's uh, presence in multi-camera setups and so on, uh, and so that presence doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Um, but I think having a you know, having a an adaptable camera in that particular form factor is uh, taking a step back to some of the some of my long ago cameras that sat on my shoulder like a cat so mm, it's, that's my goal would be so it seems as a, as a box as a, as a box to build off of it seems to have a lot going on absolutely um, I hope they continue to stick with boxes because just let them know we want box cameras we want everything to be a box from now on it's so perfect and just build from there um, and it just feels it just feels right I don't have the experience like Stephen has as far as using cameras 20 years ago I started in 2000 2006, and I just had a little point and shoot, and I fell in love with it. And um, it don't matter where you started at; it's about, um, I would say, just about enjoying the journey. And the journey that I'm on right now, I'm building all of my cameras out into like rectangles. So to start with the box and kind of configure from there, let's keep that going, Sony. And we do want to know if you can run audio out from the USB-C port because I was doing that on my MacBook using a Rode mic, and it worked. So it should work on a 20. $5,000 camera, mm. but it's also a great way if you don't have an XLR cable to run some uh, some separate audio into something like a Rode Video NTG, which is only like a $250 mic, yeah. but that's what we're using right here, and it has a USB-C port on yeah. it. You can run audio from USB-C, but we want to know, can you do it on a barometer? I mean, that's the USB-C is supposed to be the future, so, you know, I mean, I can't, here we are still with BNC. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're going we to let y'all go. We're going to be back uh, okay. later on, me and Steven. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get some work done, show y'all more about this camera, and uh, stay tuned. All right. Thanks, people. Thanks for it. It does not have a 3.5 millimeter jack. It's a cinema camera, but they called it FH3 a cinema camera. Now, that one got a 3.5, so we're trying to see what's up. But it do got this strange USB-C audio. Um, excuse me. It do have this USB-C port above, like, the XLRs, and we're wondering if you can use that for audio. Thomas, Paul, if y'all found out yet, let me know. Y'all know I asked first. I want to know. Shout out to Ryan. Uh, shout out to Ryan Doris. You know what I'm talking about? My ops out there, you heard me. In the field. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's get back to the Barano, though. Let's get back to the body. The body has a custom 7 button on it in a very, very sensitive spot. Like a nice spot. Like a unique spot. Let me make sure I'm in my third so I can put this on my vertical with the halo. You know what I'm talking about? It's the though. <laughs> Soundtrack by J-Mix. Um, shout out to my boy Blends, though, though. He over here mixing it up, though, man. We got this little vibe going on in here. Um, I got to keep the uh, atmosphere going, so let me take a commercial. I'll be right back. The SD card slots are straight. That's all I'm going to say. That's a good thing. The good straight. The neck the straight and narrow. The straight and narrow, you know what I'm talking about? I'm getting too deep on this, but I, I'm saying we can make better cameras. They shouldn't be on the right side though. It should be like at the bottom, in the middle, top. It should be at the top of the screen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let's figure that out. Yo, the viewfinder is an upgrade though. It's a little bit sharper. It's got a good feel. It's got two quarter twenties on it. One on the back. One on like you know one of the sides. I'm feeling it. It's sharper. It's not ooh la la, but it is a very big upgrade. Mm hmm. Mm. 
check this out. If you want to focus magnify, you can only do that if you have an LCD attached, like the one it come with. You cannot do that through the monitor. Why? Why? Just think about that. The built-in V-mount is the next biggest thing about this camera. Yo, you just throw a real battery on there. You just you just get jiggy. Don't tell me. It's an FS9 owner. Even if I had the bread, I wouldn't go buy it tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm lying. I'll go get that joint, man. i go get that joint tomorrow. I ain't going to lie to you. I'll just go pick it up. Um, I'm going to bury the FX9 for use in the future me that's the end of the video cut dang I had the low cut filter on the whole time too that's crazy man that's crazy man it's the bottom <laughs> hey man, hold up, Bruce Lee, hold up, man.